What is five on five football and how does it impact Florida State? You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm going to explain to you why Florida State and every major college football program is going to love Five on Football. Hello, my name is Brian Smith, and today's episode of Locked on Seminoles is going to focus on recruiting. You can find us wherever you get your podcast for free and on YouTube, part of the awesome Locked on Network. This show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off of your first purchase. So, yes. Five on five football. It is the most important new revelation for the recruiting industry, and it's just getting started. I went to another event this past weekend, and I tell you what, I'm very happy about it. Saw some seven on seven on Saturday, Sunday morning. The five on five began. It was Pylon, Atlanta, and it is really important. So if you take nothing else from this podcast, the next 30 to 45 seconds, this is what you need to know. Traditionally, recruiting analysts like myself, whether it's Chad Simmons, John Garcia, Andrew Ivins, anybody else you can think of, we do not get even remotely, not even 10% of the reps we need, big guy on big guy, good on good, to evaluate players. Not even in the stratosphere. There's just no way to do it. Friday nights, most of the time, the elite offensive lineman, most, is going up against somebody who just can't compete with that individual. Nothing I can do about it. So Friday nights are iffy. But at these camps, five on five, they put five O linemen up, five D linemen, two reps against each other, go down the line, and then they rotate teams. It's pretty simple. I can get right up there in front of these guys and get video. That's good because when I get it, that means a lot of colleges are getting it. All these teams that can concrete information they want, they want to see it right in front of their eyes. Well, this is the closest way. They, the coaches can't go to these before you ask. They are not allowed but they're going to get it from these teams. They've got people just like me shooting video and they can send it to colleges. That is everything. The recruits get it. They send it to colleges. They post it to social media. So there it is. Again, this is very important because there's not enough of it. It is really, really hard to evaluate when you want to get a few clips of somebody. I'm making an evaluation on something and I see 10 to 15 seconds. That's what we've done for years. Realistically, Minus just watching a kid move in space and just run over some kid that's 240 when he's 305. That's what we've gotten for years. And again, there's no fixing that. It's nobody's fault, but it happens all the time. At these camps, and they're getting better. My buddy that runs California Power has by far the best team in the country right now, and that's Ray McNeil. He's got that organizing and enrolling. He's got kids from California to Miami. He's got a lot of talent. There's Torian and some other guys, too. he got teams going. They're, they're getting it going. But it's going to get better. And over the next year, you're going to see recruiting analysts pass up on seven-on-seven seven events that don't have five-on-five. Five. The Pylon Atlanta event I went to, this is the new wave of it. Here's why, again, that it's important. This video, one way or the other, is going to end up in the lap of Florida State and every other school in the country in front of their eyes. The more video they have, the easier it is to evaluate kids. It's just volume. So what, what are we talking about five on five? Is it padded? No. Does it have certain types of weight limits, this and that? Not really. Sometimes there's a mismatch. Sometimes there's not. But there was a handful of reps that I saw on Sunday that it was literally like a Florida State, Georgia kind of kid going against each other. And then the next one would be at least a kid that's good enough to play group of five against somebody that could play a Florida State. Dontrell Glover, a kid that Florida State is ardently recruiting, was there and I talked to him before the event and I watched him and he was my MVP, if you will. That's the kind of kid that I wouldn't have ranked as high or wouldn't have thought of as highly without seeing him in that environment. I saw him a little bit of under armor, but they only get a couple of reps. There's so many good guys. They don't have enough time to do it. We need an under armor. That's just an O-line D line for reps. And they're never going to do that. So they don't have enough time. It's not, it's not possible. It's not on under armor. We need more of this though. This is how you circumvent having just like one event or two events. Rivals does their own camps and there's some others, but we need everybody in one spot for linemen. It's just a different deal. Now, here's the other part with it. How does it work? It's time restraint. 
that once they the referee says go, it's simple as that. Once the referee says go, that clock starts. Even when they switch, like one team's on offense, one team's on defense, when they're rotating, the clock's rolling. These kids do a rep. There's a bag in behind. Does he go around and touch the bag, win or loser? If you don't let him touch the bag, offense wins. Defense wins, he gets the bag. It's not rocket science. But that clock's rolling. You see the hustle. You see who listens. Their coaches are going at it. They're telling each other, hey, this is what's going on. Hey, get this guy over here. Get lined up. I mean, it's it's chaos that's controlled. It's pretty cool to be right there in front of. And I'll show a video. I got about 10 minutes of video I'm going to show. I downloaded it already to Locked On Seminoles, but I'm going to play it here as well in just a few minutes. It's something that I think a lot of people will enjoy because if you think about a two-minute drill in football, it's hell on earth, right? Like every second literally counts, and that's what this is. You got to run your technique the way it's supposed to be done, but you need to go fast to get lined up because you want your next guy. You got to expect your guy to win. The more points you get, the higher up you go in the rankings, whether you win. Uh, California Power won this first one there, that are that I went to, and then this past weekend on Sunday, they won it again. I've seen some others like videos and stuff, and Ray's told me about it. But now I'm kind of locked in. This is what I'm going to look for, and I think a lot of recruiting analysts will as well. We can see seven on seven all over the country constantly, especially down here, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi. There's a camp or a combine of some kind going on with skill players. The linemen, it's more drill related. This is about the only way to do it where I get a lot of good players in one spot. Again, that's the key. It's not just big on big. It's good big on big. Let me give you a few examples of some of the names that are there. These are kids that are like 20 to 40 offer kids. Zaire Addison, offensive tackle. Florida State and everybody's offered him. He's just out of uh, south of Tampa at Sumner High School. Uh, Gavin Blanchard from Tampa Jesuit. You got uh, Cannon Pickett. He's at Tampa Wharton. You got John Terrell Glover. He's a kid from Langston Hughes just out of side of Atlanta. Max Buchanan at Seminole High School on the north edge of Orlando. Uh, you got Javon Hilson, kid committed to Florida State from Coco. You got Marcus Jones from California. He's one of the best players on the West Coast. You got Brandon Brown from O'Galley High School over on the Space Coast, committed to Texas. Those are just a handful of the guys, not even close to all of them, that were on California Power team. These are all major Power 5 players that are now competing in a camp where I can see them. Sometimes the kids go up, sometimes they don't. It just depends on your perspective on who's good and who's not. But to give you an example of that, like there are certain plays, uh, like Myron Charles played there as well, and Myron's a very, very talented kid, big T tackle, Florida State, and everybody else has offered When you see him go up against kids, he plays at Port Charlotte. I don't have a way to really grade his high school film. It's just not possible. But again, like this list, I'm looking at the the totality of it. J. Raylan McCoy, maybe the best player in Mississippi, was there as well. Andre Fuller from Georgia. You you need these kinds of reps. Let's use Andre Fuller for an example. He plays at Grayson. His ranking is all over the place on these networks. Rivals just moved into a four-star, and I talked to my buddy John Garcia today. I'm like – This kid was a dude over and over again, effort, the speed, the twitchiness, all that, and he wanted the reps. He went in there and he went to compete. He wanted every single rep he can get. That's the kind of kid that you're going to see win a lot of things at the next level for his team. Everybody wants effort, right? It's not a secret. You want effort to be on your team every chance you get. So that's kind of the basics of what's going on with this. I'm going to show you here in just a minute the video, and I'll talk a little bit about it as it goes on and let people just kind of make their own judgment. You can say whatever you want about it, but it's very important for these coaches to get it in for us. And I'm excited about it probably more than you are because this has been frustrating for me and many of us in this industry for a very long time. With that being stated, we're going to pay some bills here in just a second. First off, it's something that I am extremely familiar with because I've been using it for years. Fire TV is something that if you have not used it, I can tell you probably just about as much about it as somebody that works at the company. Fire TV has been around for a long time and I got it in 2016. It's an adapter you can put into a smart TV and work. And there are actual Fire TVs that you can buy as well. You can watch NBC, you can watch cable channels, local channels, whatever it is. I'm a sports guy. Obviously, that's what I do. Anything you can think of with sports, whether it's like the March Madness is coming up. I love March Madness. You can watch all the games on a Fire TV stick or the Fire TV. 
it's very simple. Also, it's a hell of a lot cheaper than if you're looking at buying or getting cable every month. My dad pays way too much. I'm finally getting him, although he is archaic with how he does stuff, to dump the hundred and some odd dollar bill and get a Fire TV adapter. I mean, it's not that hard. So there is something else with it, though. It also has a transition. They have Fire TV, an app for new channels that are just Fire TV. It's pretty cool. All you got to do is say, Alexa, play Fire TV channels, et cetera, something like that. They will pull up. It's an app. You can go through and it's got a bunch of shorts and different things you can watch, just like being on YouTube or something of that nature. So if you really want to do something for yourself and save some money, check out Fire TV. You should trust me on this. Learn more at amazon.com forward slash locked on Fire TV. Also, besides Fire TV, Game Time is an app that I have used and I have a lot of success with it. If you're like me, you've been in a situation where at least once in a while, you're not sure about buying a ticket to a concert, whether it's music, whether it's a NASCAR event, MLB, college baseball, whatever it is. If you need to get a ticket, the Game Time app works. You should download it now. Download it, and within 20 seconds, you type in the name of a team, an event, whatever it is. You can click on a seat, and it will show you where you will sit at that arena, at that venue. I don't know about you, but I'm not a real trusting person. This makes it a lot easier. It's also very convenient because it's fast. They also have something at the end like flash deals up sometimes, not always the best at getting things done quickly. Flash deals right before an event. If you decide to go, they'll have last minute ticket deals, prices that you will like. If you find another ticket company that has also got that seat for a lower price, they will refund your money up to 110%. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for 20 bucks off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, now we're going to play. I'm just, bear with me here. I'm going to present and play this video. It's a very simple situation. We're going to have all kinds of different things that people think about this, whether it's fair, it's unfair, whatever. Best here, the first time you go through it is just to learn. Notice that this is full on. There's no pads. They're not tackling each other, but sometimes they go to the ground. With that being stated, it is about pass protection and pass rushing. It's nothing different than you would ever see before. The difference is I'm standing five feet from these guys to 20 feet away. I changed angles throughout the video and just put a whole bunch of clips together. It's a bunch of recruits. The team that is California power, they're by far the best team there. They dominate for the most part. But there are other kids that had their moments, and this is their chance to go up. Some of the California power kids that got a ton of offers get beat on reps and sometimes badly. There's no hiding with film. That's the key. If you are good, go out and prove it. You're still not going to win every rep, though. That's what this is about. So once again, bear with me. I'm going to share my screen. And for those of you listening, I'm going to talk through this and kind of explain it, like what's happening, who it is, et cetera, and why it's important. So again, bear with me. If you're just listening on some app like Odyssey or whatever it may be, that's fine. I'm more than happy to explain it to you. And I still adv advise, I've got this uploaded, like I said earlier, as its own episode. It's just five on five, Pylon Atlanta. So you can check that out as well. All right, here we go. Now, this video is a lot of fun for me because I had the opportunity to see like this first kid's Marco Jones. He's a kid that is a player moving from linebacker to D end. I don't get to see film of him very often. This is Brown, the defensive line from O'Galley. Fast as all get out. And you have all these different reps. Look at them trying everything they can and just going at it. That's Jay Raylan McCoy, arguably. The, oh, wow, he just pancaked that guy. From Mississippi, he might be one of the top 30 players in the country for the class of 26. He's about 6'6", 250, and he, he is quite the athlete. He loves to just long-arm guys. Look at that. He just buries that kid. But then you also have a guy like Zaire Addison here. Left tackle, kick step practice. You have that opportunity. And then there's our, there's our big guy. That's Dontrell Glover. He is one of the strongest offensive linemen in the country. Good luck with that. 
Here's Max Buchanan, one of the craziest guys I've had a chance to, to be around. He was uh, out there with his shirt off before this event. It was about 35 degrees. He's, he's a little crazy, but that's what you need up front. And then there's a guy like this who's underrated a little bit, to be honest with you. He doesn't have as many reps in front of film, so that's good for him. And there are other guys like that, too. The team in yellow, in case you didn't already know, is California Power. They're the more dominant program, but that doesn't mean they always win every rep. The kid right here in red shoes, I don't know his name. He's a kid from North Carolina. That's a young man that doesn't have like a bunch of offers. This is a way for him to get more exposure. That's the number one thing for it. This next guy, this is uh, Hilson. This is the kid committed to Florida State. He is a freak. He will probably be ranked a five-star by the majority, if not all the services for it's over. His pass rushing skills are just insane. I'm going to back that up just a second so everybody can see that again. Hilson is a very, very special player. Yeah, that, that foot speed is, is a little bit different. And I just also showed a few other clips of other guys getting after it. Here's an example of uh, Mr. Gerald's. He's, a, he's an underclassman from the state of Georgia. Florida State and the entire world has offered him. Uh, Deuce Gerald, he's a special talent. This is another rep where it just shows anybody can win or lose. That's That right there is a pancake. So anytime you get a chance to see players like this one-on-one, -on -one, though, it's the best right there's Marco. He didn't win that rep. He's a kid that's got an offer from about every school in the country, but he's changing positions. How does he, how does he relate? Let's watch Marco again on this. First rep he loses second rep. He just tries to go outside, but then he spins back in. He's learning. His dad was there coaching him up, but that's an example of how hard this really is. Speed. Absolutely no substitute for it. When I think about all the guys that are good at this, it still comes down to the foot quickness that we're trying to see. Andre Fuller, I thought, was as good as anybody there, Hilson included with that. He's number two that just went through a couple reps ago. And as you can see, it's physical. I mean, these guys are getting tossed around. If you lose the rep, you lose the rep. But at at the end of the day, there wasn't any fights or anything. Everybody was just really competitive, and they got after it. The only thing that I'd really like to see added with this is just more space. It's kind of hard to do because we had two teams going against each other, and then right next to them was another two teams, but that's just semantics. Everything else, it's just based on four seconds to get to the bag or touch it. It's really no different than like throwing a pass in seven on seven. You get four seconds to throw it. The key again, do you or do you not reach the bag? Look at that hump move. Holy cow. That's insane right there. That is big time. So here's Hilson again. He got beat on that rep a little bit, but he got inside at the last second. He's one of the hardest working kids that I've met. Really good kid. He came up to me after the event, wanted his film right away. <laughs> that right there is impressive. As you can see, there's no hiding your feet. And this is what college coaches want. Who has the quickness to play big time football? And who doesn't? Sometimes you get your butt kicked on a rep. The other thing I was looking at, some of these guys I know personally, they're big time recruits. When they got beat, how did they react on the next play? How did they react? Like there's Glover, that first rep against that kid. That's a much smaller kid. He didn't have a great rep, but he competed hard on the next one. Didn't let it bother him. That's important. This is big Gavin Blanchard. He's a center from Jesuit. There's, there's Max, crazy Max. He's, he's pretty strong. Florida State and all the Florida schools are after him. This Cannon Pickett from Wharton High School, class of 26, got beat on that first rep, held him off on the second. This is big Myron Charles, way too strong for this kid. This kid's way too small for Myron. Myron made that look pretty easy. Here's Hilson playing some inside. A dip and rip, really good. You don't see that many kids – with this kind of athleticism, I'm telling you, in one space, unless it's an Under Armour camp as a rule. 
We just don't get enough. Here's this is Dontrell once again. It's a lot of fun for us. I think within a year, the camps, or excuse me, the seven on seven tournaments that don't have this as a part of it with five on five in addition, will end up losing some teams because there are organizations like 24K and California Power that have branched off into this and have teams for seven on and for five. They're going to go wherever they can so both teams can be in the same spot. That's important. Again, this is an opportunity for all these kids to get a lot of experience. Like that kid right there doesn't have the same kind of films that some other kids might, but he's obviously good. Technique is awesome. Here's Cannon Pickett again. He's got offers from about everybody. Class of 26, it's DJ Pickett's cousin, in case you were wondering, and Booker Pickett's uh, brother. It's Jay Raylan. There's more Don Trell. He is just a horse. No, not, not hardly anybody can really bull rush or one arm him. He's That's the only rep I saw him lose in the camp. There's Gavin again. Pretty good pass rush against him. And here once again is Max. This is Max Buchanan at Seminole High School. He got beat on that rep and gave up the inside. That's a cardinal sin for a guard. That guy was pretty good. He went against Max pretty hard. Sometimes you got to hold it down differently. That's a little bit of a power move for an offensive lineman. There, once again, I, I still think Andre Fuller is underrated. Number two there. He's awesome. Plays at Grayson High School just outside Atlanta. Marco Jones. Here's Zaire Addison again. Zaire's got a really good kick step. He's just got to get stronger. Dontrell, he lost leverage there, but his strength held, it, held out for him. Blanchard. There's Max once again. Max anchors himself. It's, it's pretty hard. Look at the speed. Marco Jones with a nice move on the inside. Oh, got buried there, though. Here's another rep once again from the big fella, Dontrell Glover. Look how close I am to this. This is me filming all these. I'm like right there next to him. There's no way in hell I can ever get this kind of video in anything other than this environment. Obviously, I can't be on a football field. This is kind of like the NBC camera or ESPN camera or something they put right above the quarterbacks during the game. This is about as close to it as you can get. That's Jay Raylan again with his long, long arms. He has one move, basically. He long arms you and just walks you to the quarterback. He is a horse. Zaire Addison. And there's Dontrell again. He had actual Florida State pants on, in case you were wondering. Those are Florida State sweats. Blanchard, watch out for Clemson with him. Here's Max again. Good job of really holding on uh, on that rep. He's pretty patient when I watched him block. There he got beat on the spin, though. That's that's Deuce Gerald's that beat him. So, again, way to kind of do it for me, and it's a lot easier to do that in one place and see all that because, like, college coaches, just like you or I, can hit rewind and just watch a kid over and over again. How does he get off? Does he do well on the first rep and still keep the same mental fortitude that he did on the second rep or vice versa? Does he do poorly? How does he come back? There's a lot of different ways you can evaluate this, and I don't get enough of it. So it's something I wanted to talk about a little bit, and hopefully you understand a little bit more after I showed that. Now, on to the next. Let's talk a little bit about LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs, make sure you're checking it out because if you are hiring for a small business, 
It is not an easy thing to do. LinkedIn Jobs has over six million, excuse me, one billion people that have used this app in some way, shape or form. LinkedIn Jobs isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. And you can message people that you didn't know and get information from them. That that's all you want to do. Want to learn about something. There are professionals on there that just talk to people. There are companies that you can talk to as a person looking for a job and vice versa. It is an open network. But most importantly for you small business owners, it is an opportunity to post something and get a candidate. And most people over 80% of the time get a job lead with their small business within one business day. So make sure with LinkedIn, you post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. All right, this last segment, what I really want to talk about is the opportunity for teams to now use this. How are they going to use it and who's going to gain the advantage? It's really about effort. You hear me talk about relationships a lot of the time here at Locked On Seminoles, and that's not going to change. Locked On Seminoles is, you know, a building business. That's what I'm doing through my YouTube channel and all the different ways you do this on Locked On Seminoles or any other one. It could be locked on Arkansas or any other. You have to relate to the people that come to your channel. Well, Florida State or Missouri or Southern Cal or any other team, how do you use it to your advantage? Every team's different location, et cetera. For Florida State, it's a little easier, let's be honest, because there are so many linemen that are within, let's say, 400-mile radius of where the Knolls are located, especially Georgia, Alabama. Those states are just – it's utterly ridiculous how many big men there are that play O-line, D-line. State of Florida has a lot of edge guys. They don't have a ton of big-bodied guys for D-line especially. That's more Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, across the deep south for whatever reason. It's just always been that way. This is an opportunity for them to get an eye on a kid that might be at a 1A or 2A school that somebody may not have known about. Here's an example. A kid that Florida State would love to get on campus is Justice Terry from Manchester High School in western Georgia. He is at a 1A high school. He got discovered early somehow, even though he's at Manchester, and got a ton of offers. He ended up committing to UGA, but Florida State, Auburn, and every other school in the country. He's still trying to get justice to come. He's the exception, not the rule, that it's at a 1A. But if a kid like that goes to one of these camps, how do you approach recruiting him? It's up to the school to use it, but if you have this tool and you see a kid, the one thing Florida State's always done, you got to give them credit under Norvell, they make their own evaluations. The teams that use the five on five and just make their own evaluations don't wait. They're going to have the best chance to get the player that somebody else wishes that they got in on a little bit earlier down the line. Because once you start that relationship, you are ahead of somebody else that's your competitor. That's bottom line. Just my opinion on it. So with that, uh, please like and subscribe to this podcast. Please understand that I'm really trying to broaden my horizons here and we're trying to show you from many different perspectives, what recruiting is like as we head into spring ball with Florida State. So with everything that's out there about this, if you have any questions, please leave comments. I'm more than happy to talk about it. This is a lot of fun for me, and I'm going to hopefully see more five-on-five five in the month of April. I to talk to my buddy about it. There's one of these down in Orlando, so I'm excited about that. Everybody have a great day, and thank you very much.